Hey everyone, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be covering two main things. First, I'm going to be covering Obsidian for beginners. And then I'm also going to be covering project man my pro project management system that follows the getting things done methodology. And in particular, I'm going to be following this Obsidian vault that I've made. It's the Monroe template. It's available on my GitHub link in the comments. And so whether you're new to Obsidian or whether you're a diehard supporter, there's probably going to be something here for you. So let's just get started. For those that are new to Obsidian, what's Obsidian? Why? Why Obsidian? Now, I'm not like sponsored or anything. It's a fr it's free anyways. But this is sort of the journey that I've gone through with projects, project management and managing tasks. So I first started college undergrad with a paper system, just having post-it notes or uh, note cards and each week really just writing down um, what sort of homeworks and different tasks I had to do on any given day. So this was, I think, probably for an entire week, just writing all the tasks and um, by the given day and checking them off at the end of the day. But if you notice, this is very, uh, you have to have assigned tasks and it all has, your, your life has to be task to task. And that's really all that you're focusing on. And so for long-term projects, this can be very um, unyieldy. Is that a word? It can be very difficult to use. And so the next sort of thing that I gravitated towards <clears throat> was iOS notes. This is a slight step up in that <clears throat> I can use my computer, I can also use my phone, write my notes much more quickly, I don't have to erase and rewrite them. Then after that, I started to use an Excel system. This is where I'm having multiple sheets for different um, areas. For example, one sheet has an inbox where I just write down different ideas that I need to organize. Another sheet has reoccurring tasks, so for example, daily tasks that I always want to do, weekly tasks. Um, but again, it's very bad with projects. Projects, I want to have different documents and they're all li living and breathing and I'm having to search through a bunch of folders and find the right document, create a new document. It all gets very difficult to manage multiple projects. And I do have a projects folder uh, that I won't show, but it's it just, you can see that it's sort of all over the place. Then the next one is Notion. This is it's great functionality. However, it's first not free if you want like a lot of the good features and also it's cloud-based. I really want something that's offline that I can use whenever and that is also secure. I have ambitions of lots of startups and different ideas and if I know that a Notion employee or not saying that this would ever happen, but if something like that can happen, I don't want it to happen. So I'd rather have it on me to secure my own notes. And then the next one is also Todoist. This is similar to Notion, however, it's more task oriented. Um, but again, it's on, it's on cloud-based, it's cloud-based online. Um, and then as always, it's not free. And yeah, it, again, it's also not project based in particular for using lots of files for projects like I do, which I'll cover briefly in the <clears throat> in the next parts. So now I'm with now I'm using Obsidian. Suppose you're interested. So now how do we get started? If you're new to Obsidian, this is uh, essentially what you do. When you download Obsidian, you're going to have an open screen like this. And you won't see these. These are my recent vaults. And okay, first let's just open it. So if you downloaded my uh, my template vault from GitHub, you'll see it show up. You might have to unzip it first. So once you unzip it, you'll have the folder, open it, and this is what you'll see. And if it, sh if it doesn't quite show up on the side like this, if anything's um, spotty, then follow these instructions. So first you wanna toggle this. Right now it's off, we want it on. So now you can see the folders are organized as as I intend I intend to sh I, I intend them to be and then also open up the obsidian start so let's do that again go to manage workspace layouts load and then it'll open up 
auto so it opens up images but it'll open up this main file and this is where you want to start and so if you're well again we're assuming you're unfamiliar but with obsidian everything is folder and file based so a vault is essentially a root folder where all of your other folders and notes are held so this is called the monroe template vault and in this vault in this folder we have 151 files and 123 folders so that's a vault that's sort of how uh, obsidian is structured and so with obsidian we have um, all these different sort of ui components to it to make it more than just a bunch of folders and files so there's a right sidebar left sidebar i don't know if these are the official names but it's what i'm using for now the bottom which has more options the top right here and this little side bar so these are all different things you can click on you can customize for more functionality <clears throat> and now in this video i'm not going to cover all of those different aspects what i'm mainly trying to cover is how do you uh get started how do you get rolling you i'm sure you can find other videos that cover all these little buttons my suggestion is just click them and explore maybe find one or two key videos that are helpful maybe some people in the comments will comment them i'm in particular focused on this fault getting you started with the functionality customizing the functionality and the different settings options so this first part of the vault for beginners looks at how do we set up obsidian in particular the settings and plugins so looking at the options here we can see these are the different options that show up in settings so for example options we look we see we have general editor files appearance hot links core plugins and community plugins now the other ones, core plugins, community plugins, are just extensions of these two. So this covers all the settings. And so just looking at, at this first, if we go into our settings, we go to general doesn't really have anything, any setting functionality. Um, but if we go to editor, this is where you start to see all the different things. Um, and these are different settings you can explore and this tells you a little bit about them. You'll notice that the setting also tells you a little bit about what it does. And my suggestion is to just download two of these vaults, open them side by side, click one on, on one side, leave it as default on the other side, and then you can see what changes. It, it's just so that you understand where everything is. If, if you wanna become a very, uh, very good, around obsidian yeah so you can just check that out files and links same thing just a bunch of different settings you can have and and explore appearance this is where things start to start to get a lot more customizable in in the sense of you're interacting with it daily. So for example, appearance, how do you want it to appear? Right now I have dark theme. You can also have light theme. <coughs> for fonts, you can specify that. How you want the, the different sort of buttons and, and your title to appear. Right now my title is in line so I can type anything. It changes the name of the title. There's other ways to not have the title show up. And then for even more customization, we Obsidian has, um, this is where I'm not too familiar, but there's, it's Markdown based. And so with that, there's also a lot of JavaScript and CSS and other things that I'm not too familiar with, but I know enough to be able to adjust the headings, the text color, bold color, italics, this one, and and have this little color for the check mark, and all of these different things you can adjust yourself as well. So when you download this, there's going to be a 
Let me see if I can find the folder. Yeah, so when you download this, th these are all the files that you're downloading. And some of them are hidden. For example, the dot .obsidian file. This is where you have all the different appearance, um, community plugins, and other things like that. And so with this one, you're gonna see within Obsidian, there's snippets. In snippets, there's a theme.css file. And so here, you can essentially go to these different lines and specify different colors. And that's actually pretty easy, given that you just have to go to the line, change the background color, change heading colors, um, so that this that's one benefit of this that it's very easy to customize a lot of the different things There's other options for themes and um, Other stuff like that, but the aim with this fall is to just be minimal uh, and functional So now hotkeys if you're not familiar with hotkeys it's essentially ways to perform actions just just using clicks with your keyboard and can make no editing no taking a lot quicker and so these hotkeys are distinguished into two categories core plugins and community plugins core plugins are those that obsidian itself has comes with by default and they're secure now community plugins are those that other developers can can make and you can download and and set up and so with community plugins more often than not at least from what i've seen the people that make these community plugins um, they're secure because it's the codes on github other people can verify and you can see how many people have downloaded it um, so you get an understanding of sort of of what you're downloading and so people can for example have malicious code but it's unlikely especially if it's going to be one of these um, plugins that has thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of downloads. So these are just the core plugins I've set up for myself for this fall. You, again, I encourage you to explore, change it as you want. Um, so, so for example, let's go over this fold less. What does this do? We hit command option, uh, right bracket, or maybe not. Oh, I think I might have them mixed up. But if you do fold less, fold more, you can see on a given heading, it gets folded in. Or I can just click it. And you fold, you can go through your notes really quickly and organize them in this manner. Now there's other options like this. So move up, move down. This is moving up a line, moving down a line. Navigate back and forth. This goes back and forth, but with the hotkey. And so there's lots of other hotkeys like this. You can toggle bold, command B, toggle italics, command I. So it's very quick to do these sorts of things. You don't have to highlight, well, you do have to you want to do italics you would highlight it um, but you don't have to always go back like on Microsoft Word click the italics and then there's also community plugins as I mentioned these are ones made by developers and yeah they can be very helpful for example this one clear a line oh control C so I just deleted a line without having to highlight it and delete. Yeah, so feel free to explore this, see what's, what are the different options. These are in particular for my workflow. And so you might have different plugin, core plugins that you wanna set up, maybe community plugins that you wanna set up. But we, we will go shortly into community plugins. The aim of this page is mostly, these are the core plugins I've set up um, and the hotkeys I've assigned them. There's also uh, hotkeys that I have unassigned. And then I just wanted to throw this in, the community plugins hotkeys in, on this page, just for the sake of having it all on one page. Um, but we're gonna go into community plugins shortly. 
And so these are the core plugins I have turned on. There are other ones that I do not have turned on that might be helpful to you. For example, if you're, if you have lots of presentations, there's like a slides option. Canvas is good for graphs and drawing, I believe. And yeah, so lots of other ones that you can explore. Not core plugins. So this is where people can spend a lot of their time just exploring and getting lost to the point where it becomes unproductive. And I ended up in setting this up, looking through over, I think, 900 community plugins. First, I, I saw which ones were the most useful and then um, narrowed those down to, I think, 140 uh, that seemed like they could actually provide value that I would use them. And then from there, I narrowed it down to, I think, around 40. And so with the 40 that I did narrow down to, I have them all on this list. And as you can see, it's a curated list. You can see the different types of core plugins that there are. There are plugins for text, plugins just for the UI. So how you're interacting with it, how Obsidian looks to you, plugins that are just adding additional hotkeys, plugins that can help you with tasks and project management, plugins for time management productivity. Yeah, lots of different plugins. There's some that I, that I wanna come back to in the future that I didn't look at. For example, for drawing and charts, I didn't include that here, but there are, for example, Obsidian charts, um, Canvas mind map, I think Excalidraw might have been one that I didn't include. Excalibrain, maybe that was the one. Yeah, so there's lots of ones that I didn't explore, some that were close to being on my used, but not really. And then the rest of the plugins that I also explored, but didn't end up using. And then this is just the full list of all the plugins that I looked at. In, in more detail. So with with each of these plugins, or for the majority of them, the ones, the community plugins that I used, I made a note to explain sort of uh, what settings I have for it and um, its functionality, how to use it. And so for example, this text format is, I'm using the default settings and this for this plugin allows us to format text and so it can capitalize all the words in the sentence it can um, if you highlight certain things and then you just use a hotkey to make them all bullet points if these weren't bullet points and then there's other options that that it had that I also didn't uh, want to set up because I didn't see myself using them so that's something that you can explore if you want or just take this fault as it is I try to make it so that it's it addresses the core needs. Um, yeah, and then another one we can look at is Quiet Outline. What's this? So for this one, I had default settings and then the usage. So here we're essentially just using it to view an outline of a document and, and see it at the different levels. So all of these are different headings. This is the heading one, heading three, heading four. And so if we go here, uh, where is it? Outline, <clears throat> quiet outline. So here we can see, actually let's fold all headings in this. From an overview, there's three headings in this file. So if we go to, where is it? To the first one. Here we can see the three headings. Now let's say we want to see uh, a heading down. So that's basically just expanding this one. We can look at that, but from the side without having to manage or deal with folding and unfolding all these headings manually. Yeah, so lots of plugins, lots of plugins to explore. And I tried to have notes on all on the majority of them. There's some that are a little bit more uh, nuanced and detailed that I want to come back to and add more 
examples and notes for. So once you've gotten familiar with the settings in Obsidian, the UI, the different buttons and things, um, then you can jump into the project management vault. Or not the vault, but the section of this vault. And so here I try to be detailed in, in how I'm using getting th things done. Uh, so introducing getting things done and then sort of going into how I've integrated it with Obsidian. So just going over the file. Um, yeah, you can read that. And so let's dive quickly into the workflow. So looking at this chart, getting things done is essentially it starts off with finding tasks or actions that are collected in inboxes. And so inboxes is any place where things have not sort of met their final resting spot. Um, and typically people use their mind for this. If you have like a list of things in your mind that you need to do and it's always there, then that's technically an inbox and it's not a very good inbox because we tend to forget stuff. It can make us very stressed. And so we want, designated inboxes um, to hold these things that we need to work on. And so first is sort of setting up your inboxes. And before you maybe even start setting up the system, um, just brainstorm for like an hour. Think about every little thing that you feel hasn't sort of reached its final resting spot and then put that into your inbox. And, and that can be a note or uh, a, a paper document, something like that. And so now that we have all these actions and tasks in our inbox that we need to do, we need to go through them and process them. And so the first step is seeing if a task is actionable or if it's uh, something that we need to store. So let's say it's not actionable. Then it's a task that either is related to a project. So my version of projects are efforts. So it's something that we need to place in um, in a project's documents or folder or where, however you store your projects. Um, otherwise, it could be like an article or a magazine or a book. Um, and so then we want to store it in our library. Maybe it's last year's taxes that are just sitting on the table or mail that you need to go through and you no longer need, but you want to store it. Uh, so then we store it in an archive. And then the other option is delete it. Maybe it's something that we thought we'd be interested in. Um, so we said we'd do it, but now it's it's no longer interesting to us or we it's, it's not as important as we realized. Now the other aspect or the other side of it is now what if a task is actionable? Now how do we break it down? So first we want to see if a task is just something that you that you can do in one step or is it something that's more of a project because it requires multiple steps if it's immediate it's something we can do in less than two minutes the best thing to do is just do it if it's something that you can't do for example let's say you need to i don't know pay pay a car loan and it's in your parents name then this is where you delegate it um, yeah, so if it's less than two minutes, do it now. If it's not, this is where we go into the scheduling. So uh, we can either soft schedule or hard schedule. Soft ske scheduling for me is putting it for a particular day. No specific time, just whenever we have time on a given day. Um, but yeah, and then the other option is hard scheduling. So this is like appointments, doctor visits, or anything else where you need to get it done on, excuse me, on a specific day at a given time, hard schedule into your calendar. Last option again is delegating and waiting. If you're not the main person to drive that task forward, then you need to delegate it. Now, the other option is if a task is multi-step, if it's something that is going to require more than one step, so we do need some tracking to it, some form of structure. And so here we can first determine if it's important or urgent. If it's neither, we want to put it maybe in the someday maybe file or a someday maybe system. And so this system is just 
keeping a list of the different things that you want to do someday, maybe in the future, but it's not something that requires your attention right now. Now the next part is if a task, if a project or task is multi-step and it's important and urgent, well, we need to break it down. How do we approach this? And so for there are some projects I would say that are quick. You can draw it out on a piece of paper. It's just a checklist that you can do. All the tasks are pretty easy. You can just knock it out. And so for those, I typically just set up a note and and just brainstorm, break it down into all the different sequences of tasks and and then just check them off as I go. And this can just be a folder in the efforts, which I'll uh, in the efforts, which I'll describe in just a second. Otherwise, I have a template for taking on projects that I tend to follow. And so I, in setting up this vault, I sort of flesh that out. So going into the structure, I'll try to make this more quicker, actually. So going into the structure of my system, and not all of this is Obsidian based, there's some that's offline, or not necessarily offline, but in different um, technology or software. And so just going briefly through this, my inboxes, these are all my designated inboxes where I typically store stuff. So the common one is email inbox. This I'm using Outlook. Um, when I find something interesting like a YouTube video, an article I want to read, I bookmark it. So Firefox, uh, my downloads folder, my notes on my the, the notes app. And then I also have an inbox file on Obsidian. And then on my phone and iPad, I sometimes find videos, Safari, I sometimes find videos, so I'll leave the tabs open on, on there in expectation that I come back to them, so I always got to put those into my inbox, and then any photos that are related to actions that I need to take. Uh, wait folder, this one I actually don't use at the moment, but some people might find it useful. My someday maybe folder. My calendar is like, oh yeah, yeah. So with Outlook, this is where I schedule my, the things I need to do, spe uh, specific days and times, not just something that I need to do on a given day. It needs to be specific day, specific time. Now for efforts. Or actually, I'll come back to this, but these are the different folders that I used to organize the different efforts or projects that I'm undertaking. Now archive as well. So this is a hard drive, for example, that I have that's encrypted. Um, so in there I store personal identification information that I need. Maybe if I'm, I don't know, filling something out or if I need to, I don't know, going, for example, when I started college, I needed a lot of these things like um, vaccination papers or uh, I don't remember what else, but th these things come useful in sort of let em emergencies or when you need these things quickly, you can always find it in one spot. And the thing is just making sure it's safe in a vault and, um, and encrypted. And now yearly documents, this one I won't go through it as much, but every year we have a bunch of documents it's very, that are very useful to store. Um, either for ourselves when we need to reference them or for family members if we're passing away having all this information can help them quickly go through go through it I don't know I added that note, but uh, yeah these things can be useful when you need to when you're filling out applications you're going for a job or you're going to college useful to have these things now this is for more personal stuff that doesn't quite fit like a a yearly schedule, for example, if you just want photos and videos of um, trips and specific areas, yeah, specific areas, just store it in your personal. And then, yeah, efforts that you are no longer working on, you want to archive them. Okay, so let's take a moment to reflect. If we're following the system where we're where we're storing tasks, or not necessarily storing, but we're collecting tasks, we're processing them, seeing if it needs to be stored in our library or archive, which I just showed here, 
in my personal library is my computer, my archive is my hard drive. So we covered that. We, we're going to cover efforts. We've covered um, soft scheduling. So that takes care of immediate, intermediate, hard schedule is just calendar. So we've covered over half of this structure, of this diagram. Um, oh, we also covered someday maybe. Actually, let's briefly go into that. So here, someday maybe, are the different projects that I want to do sometime in the future. So here I have two in the vault for an example. <clears throat> and so here, um, you can see for each someday maybe, I have the name of it, priority, start date, when I want to review it, when I added it, and then the specific effort area that it's related to. So it can be life ops or it can be intellectual. I'll get into that in a moment. Um, so let's look at Learn C++. So this is a someday maybe project that I want to undertake. And so my brief description of it was just, I want to learn C in detail. And then, so another thought that came was, how can I do this? And in my idea of learning C, I wanted to follow um, the C learning program the the C programming language book. So I want to study it for about an hour a day. And maybe there's other things that I need to do to to claim that I know C. But this is the first thing that I wanted to take note of. And, <clears throat> and we can see that's stored in our command center. <laughs> I'm losing my voice, but we can see that this note is stored in the command center. Someday maybe these are the different projects I might want to come back to in the future. And this someday maybe is where they're stored. An important note is that the that the items that show up on this table are those that contain the hashtag someday maybe. So if you make a file with someday maybe with the hashtag someday maybe it's going to show up here. And so another thing to know is when you do make a someday maybe project, you're going to want to copy this and use it as a template. So just fill in this table, these properties with your information. And in this table or in this, in yeah, in this YAML or friend matter, whatever you want to call it, uh, make sure in the tag section to have someday maybe and then whatever other tags you want to have. If it has someday maybe, it's going to show up on the someday maybe file. <clears throat> so let's see. So I covered someday maybe. Now let's go into the last part of this diagram, projects. So projects have two different things. First, a project is an individual project or an individual effort. And then we have to manage all these different efforts. So there's project, setting up projects and having timelines and um, all the details of what goes into one individual project. But then there's also the management part. How do we ensure in the long term that we're, that we're fulfilling this project, that it's going to meet the success that we envision it. And so for this, I have two sort of systems or things that I have set up in this fall. The first is a standard template. And so in this template, we can see there are six files. These files, which you can see here, templates, template effort. These are the six file folders, the six folders. And each of these contains files. And so for, let's look at project charter. So when we're starting up a project, we want to have a clear vision about all these different things. And so, for example, the first one is we want a one sentence summary that we that we can think about why um, or what this project is about. So when we're just quickly going through all the different projects, if there's for I, for example, I have lots of projects. So having a one sentence, what is this project is helpful sometimes when I'm like, why did I do this or um, or when I need to review. So the about section, the uh, then there's the why. So what are the what's the purpose of the project, and by what principles are you going to uh, follow to complete this project? So guiding principles, 
and constraints that you need to follow, and then outcome envisioning. So what's, what's uh, wild success? What uh, do you expect from this project? And once you have that um, cleared up, then you can go into brainstorming the how of the project. So now that I understand what I need to do, why I'm doing it, how do I go about it? So this is also a template. We can actually review this one. Uh, so brainstorming, I have some instructions. Uh, different people have different ways. You can mind map, you can free write, but the aim of brainstorming is to write down all your ideas without judgment, focus on quality, qua quantity over quality, and then once you have all the ideas written down, then you wanna have some structure. So after you write it down, we're gonna have an initial planning phase. And so I do have two examples in this folder. Um, in the template, for example here, in the template itself is example content that you can delete once you uh, get familiar with it. And then another specific example that is applicable to me, let's see, efforts, intellectual, radiology, charter, brainstorming. So this is just me brainstorming. Let me make sure I didn't share anything that I... Yeah, okay. Because I did write this down for my particular project, but I don't think I ever revisited to make sure that it wasn't sharing something I didn't want to share. But yeah, so essentially he's just writing down everything that came down to my mind and it wasn't actually a lot, or I didn't have to write down a lot for me to actually get started with it. And so taking that, also using a little bit of ChatGPT's help, but not really. Actually in segment, did I? No, I don't think I did, not for this one. Um, I do use ChatGPT's help to help me phrase things in the right way. So for example, in the overview, here is where I wanted to be very concise and clear on what I wanted. And so having ChatGPT's help to make my language clear to myself in the future when I read this, I want, I want it to be clear and clear to other people as well in case I need to share this, in case I'm collaborating with other people on this project. And so, yeah, I do use ChatGPT's help for the, the how do you say, the overview. But in the timeline, it was more of just, how do I break this down? And so this particular project, report generation, first, as with any project, you need to ramp up. Once you start ramping up, um, in this particular case, it's so niche and so specific. First, I need to ramp up, understand other people's work. Um, and once he sees that I've sort of taken the time to do this, then it's sort of, then it's getting up to speed on what he's worked on so far so I can help contribute there and then from there it's okay now I understand what's out there and what we're doing now how do we move forward from here and then uh, since I'm only here for like six months left then writing a research paper and um, and getting some other outputs from this project for myself um, that might help me with the potential future startup or or stuff like that. So that's brainstorming. So now looking at planning and strategy. Planning and strategy I is a sort of continuation from the brainstorm. In the brainstorm we made an initial plan of the different tasks that we have to do. So now we have an idea of the timeline and milestones. And so for timeline and milestones, you can go here to the template, um, one that has a brief example. You can also reference the one that is for my particular project. So for my project, for example, I have the start date, the different milestones I have to achieve, and then when by when I hope to end this project. And then looking at the action plan. So here we can just go here. Action plan breaking down those milestones into the tasks, which again, we're drawing from the brainstorming um, each task 
I have a check mark, and so if you're not familiar with check marks, it's just uh, the dash and then two brackets, and that makes a check mark. And so then we can start to write out a task. And then if you want to query the task, so if you want, in some notes, you where I have tables that automatically display what tasks you need to do on a given day, or what's the start date of a project, you're going to need to use the start and due date to, um, to make for those querying aspects. So for example, for this task, I want to start today and then I want a due date of, um, you can just do that and then rewrite whenever you want it to be due. And then we can also have reoccurring. So let's say I want to do this every day and then we set up a task. And so this will show up in other uh, files. But for now, you can just see how I've sort of set up these things. Each milestone has tasks. You can, of course, change it to, to your own needs. But that's overview of how I set that up. And then with tasks and project management, I want to log my progress every two weeks. And so this is my progress log. So I set up a recurring task and this actually shows up in my daily notes, which I'll show in, a, in later in this video. But every two weeks, this will show up on my inbox. I have to go over each task and well, specify the task name, go over each task, specify the status and then any notes. And then for furthermore, there's going to be other areas of of tracking. So for example, improvement plan, self evaluation, these are other areas that I have that I'm going to have recurring tasks to make sure that the project is on its way to completion. So an overview, that's sort of my effort structure. It has six folders, each folder has a file. And then another thing actually that I added last minute was this upcoming projects task file which is just at the root of each uh, folder. And so this essentially just queries which tasks I have to do. I have to start doing within the next four weeks. I don't go by end date because I need to know what tasks I need to start doing. Um, I could have like a, a, a very, a reoccurring task that's like, let's say um, it starts today What's a good example? I don't know at the moment. Maybe it's like you want to pave a path in your front, in the front of your house, and it's going to take you like two months. And it's very clear that it, you just need to do the same thing over and over. Um, you don't quite want to make it a recurring task. It's just one task that you need to do. It's going to take you six months. If the end date is six months, months from now, two months from now, going by the end date isn't going to show up that you need to, it's something that you need to be doing every day and consistently. So yeah, this is just tests that I need to start within the next four weeks. And so this shows up at the start of every project as well. So now let's see, we've gone through individual projects. Now how do we manage multiple projects? To manage multiple projects, the best way that I thought about breaking this down was following the seven areas of wellness. If you're not familiar, every sort of every person has seven areas that they're sort of doing tasks or doing completing actions. And so it can be intellectual. It's just pure learning like school. It could be emotional. So meditation, therapy, anything else that helps you emotionally. It could be occupational, so those are jobs, hustles, and other sorts of things like that. It could be physical, so let's say you want to be healthy, you, or nutrition, or you, you want to improve your grooming habits, so that's physical, or social, it could be you need to improve your communication skills. Um, yeah, spiritual, that could be religion or meditation. Uh, it, it's just... What, how do you say 
whichever task you think or let me pause and think about this so any given task can have multiple areas where it benefits your life however i place it in the area that sort of aligns with it most so looking at the effort dashboard this is a querying all the different uh, projects that you have. So let's see, actually. Or let's go over it first. So this is a table, the name of the project, a link to the overview. So here you can see the overview timeline. So this was our, our brief timeline and then the plan. And then you can have a status for the project. There's other things you can add to it. These are just the properties and then you can specify what you want to show up in this table. So this one, it's not started. I started this on January. I want it to end in June and the priority of the project. And so here you can see, you can specify the different properties that show up. And when I say properties, if we look at this timeline, which is where these properties are specified, at the top, these are the different things we're showing. So we were showing the name, we we're showing the overview, timeline plan. So if you wanna add one, you can add it here and, and then tell the table to add it here as well. Uh, and then what's making this show up in the table is this tag, project intellectual. So this is a tag I'll only use for projects that are in the intellectual category. And so all of these different categories are showing projects in those. And so I don't have any for emotional or life ops yet. This is just a template um, that you can fill in for your own projects. And the thing I like about the, the seven areas of wellness is it's a good way to show sort of what areas you might be neglecting. Sure, sometimes you need to focus and you only have like occupational and physical, you there's only work and exercise and that's all there is to your life. Sometimes that's what life calls for, but other times you wanna be a little bit more well-rounded and sustainable. So that was sort of my, the reason I went with this approach. And, and always to remind us that there's more areas than just whatever we may be focused on. Yeah, so that's an overview of project management. So we've covered this sort of graph and I think the book goes into this, but I, it's, it's not showing up in the, or actually it does show up. Okay, so let's, let me reframe. So we covered the majority of, or we covered all of this diagram. Now, the one thing that we sort of swept under the rug was soft scheduling. So what is soft scheduling? So soft scheduling is when we put a task for a given day. However, it can be done at any time during that day, just whenever we have time or depending on how we feel. Um, and so for soft scheduling, that's I'm actually using Obsidian for that as well. And so this is how I'm doing it, day-to-day -day scheduling. And so here you can see it follows the it follows this folder file structure. So I have a planner and each planner, I have a, a folder for the year. And then within each folder, I have a folder for the month. So this is January, February, all the way to December. Now within each month, I have a folder for the week. And so it's continuous. So in January, there's weeks one through five in February, uh, part of week five to week nine, and then December is going to end with week 52. This is just a way so that you don't see all 32 or all 31 notes open up when you open up a given month. And it also helps if you're uh, planning by your weeks instead of um, whatever you might be doing. So for each given week, I'm going to have a daily note and a weekly review note. Now, the daily note and the weekly note can follow whatever template you want because the way that I set up this um, this vault is, let's see, where was it? Templates, 
is to try to make it modular. And so for any day, this is a template that each day will follow and you can change it. This is why I have version zero. Um, on, on any day, there are three sorts of tasks that we can, that we undertake. The first is a daily inherent task. These are tasks that we need to do every single day, regardless of what day it is. Um, it's always something that we, we need to do as a human. And so for me, that's these tasks. And maybe you don't need this. For me, I, I have bad, I have a strong work ethic, I guess you could say. And so sometimes I need reminders for self-care. And so this just helps encourage that. So once I shower, there's, boom, I got momentum for the day. So anyways, there's daily tasks. And then there's recurring effort tasks. So let's say you want to learn Spanish. That's one of your efforts that you set up. Now for Spanish, there's, you're going to need to study every day for 30 minutes, an hour, and be consistent. So you're going to want to set up a task that you want to show up in your daily, daily scheduler, you could say. And so this is going to query for all tasks that, that you need to start today that are not completed and that are reoccurring. Now the other, okay, actually, before I go on for this, just quickly showing, if we go to templates, template effort, action plan. Yeah. So if you look at the template one, there is a section for reoccurring tasks. I put them at the end of the note because if you can see, once you check it off, this, the task plugin will automatically add a task for the next day because it's a reoccurring, reoccurring task and they will always show up at the end of the file or I, you need it to, sh it's best to have it show up at the end of the file because they can start accumulating like this. Now you have 30 tasks and you don't want all of this, for example, to be at the top. So yeah, and each of these will show up in your given, in, in the day that you need to do it. Um, just because it has this symbol and because it's a task. Now, if you do want to manage these, these a little bit better, there's a community plugin called PackRat, and I do have a note on that. So if you go to community plugins, you can see all the different notes I have for each of the plugins. And there is, don't I have PackRat? Maybe that's something I'll need to add. I thought I added it. But look into PackRat. Essentially it can delete tasks that have been completed or it can just put them at the very end of the file or it can put them into a different file. So there's that. Let's see what we covered. Oh yeah, so going back to a given day, uh, there's daily tasks, there's recurring tasks. Now there's also soft schedule tasks and this is just, this can happen on just out of nowhere you have, someone needs you to do something. You can soft schedule it or in your weekly review, let's say you're planning out your entire week. This is where you would add uh, tasks for any day, any day in a week. Yes, and then, yeah. So this is essentially just manual. This is where you go. The randomness of a human of human life can be put sort of at the end of your note for a day. And then to so you notice that I have in my planner folders for all the months and then I'm having files for all the days. So how do you how do you have this automatically? And so for that I made a hotkey option Y and option W. Option Y sets up the folders. So just oh if you tell it a given year and where you want it, it'll make the, the yearly folder, it'll make the folders for each month in that year, and then it'll make the folders for each week in those months. Now for the, the files, for the weekly files, 
that and you that you want to follow the template day template week hit option w give it the specific week that you want it to set up for and it'll create files for each day like this that follow the template day and template week and then for more information on these two hockeys that i set up you can go to the quick add note and it shows you more details on this process. Yeah, so this explains it a little bit more. And then parts of the system that I haven't set up yet. So this system, I aim to cover the majority of this uh, diagram. So you can see that we have soft scheduling, hard scheduling, Scheduling is just a calendar. Uh, Obsidian does have like a calendar to it, but I prefer Outlook. It's it's just more intuitive for me. It, there's a someday maybe file. There's project breakdowns. So for each project, having a structure. Also, how do we manage multiple projects? So that's this. And then soft scheduling we talked about having daily notes where recurring tasks show up. Um, and then the, the, the things that are sort of swept, not necessarily swept under the, under the rug, but things that I sort of um, need to come back to and review a little bit more are the review things. So for example, every week, uh, how do you, what's the best way to review? How do you Make sure you have a clear mind for the start of the week. How, um, well, <laughs> going beyond weekly review. How do you schedule a quarter? How do you ensure an efficient quarter? How do you know you're making progress? Yearly review. Um, each year, should you, how do you know you made the most of your time? So all these different things that uh, I myself need to build up for myself before I, how do you say? All these different things that I need to put an effort and thought into to make sure that it's efficient for myself before I package it and try to have other people use it. And, uh, and then there's other things that I didn't do in this note that I would want to do in a future note. So for example, right now, this only supports light theme or dark theme. And maybe people aren't comfortable using going into the CSS or the hotkeys I currently have set up use control and command. And so there might be conflicts if you're using a Windows computer. So going up and clearing those up, adding more notes and examples for some of the hotkeys that are a little bit more advanced. And, and then another part is so for example, I follow projects for classes. So I have a project I or an effort that I'm taking a machine learning class. I did this last quarter and I'm taking notes. I, and now I'm done with the class. How do I process these notes to put it into my library so I can reference it for the future and make sure that I don't forget what I learned this quarter. So that's something that I want to build up as well. So yeah, all these, all these future enhancements that that I want to make. However, they don't impact the core of getting things done. Um, and so I'm probably gonna make these enhancements and then refine this vault a little bit more and probably offer it for like $5. I don't wanna uh, try to make a living off of this. This is just something that I spent some hours in. Wanna make some money. But I'm not trying to like this is my job to work with Obsidian. Yeah, so that's the core of it actually. And then the only other thing that I would mention is I have been, I did build this in public. And so I record myself for the past 14 days, making this vault, putting, you can see the decisions I made and how I've sort of uh, explored the different settings and set up the hotkeys in the playlist that where I record myself building this in public. So if you if you're curious on some of the details, 
of this vault. And you can check that out. Um, GitHub link is in the comments. Yeah, subscribe.